If you need to edit a PDF document, sign it, rearrange the pages, convert it to PowerPoint, fill out forms, but don't want to pay, you're in the right place. In this video, I'll show you seven essential PDF tasks you can perform right now with this completely free PDF editor. Personally, I don't need to edit PDFs frequently enough to justify purchasing something like an Adobe Acrobat, especially on a recurring monthly subscription. However, I do encounter the need just often enough to make it frustrating when I do need to edit. There are tons of PDF editors available out there, many with AI capabilities nowadays, but very few of them are entirely free. You may get some basic editing functions for free, but the really useful features tend to be behind the paywall. So I was pleasantly surprised when I discovered PDF Gear. By the way, this is not a sponsored video and I do not have an affiliation with PDF Gear. I just happened to read about this tool recently in a PC magazine and I just wanted to share it with you. So this tool is super comprehensive. You can pretty much do anything you can within Adobe Acrobat Pro, but rather than taking you through every single feature and tool, I'll focus on seven popular use cases for using a PDF editor. And at the end, if you think you might want to try it, I'll show you how to download the app and install it. You can use a timestamp to jump around below. First, let's talk about the layout. When you first open this app, you have the option to open your PDF file. You can even create a new PDF. But if you look at the top here, you have different tools that you can choose from for quick action. And they're organized by different categories. And you can see all of the tools in this tab here. And on the bottom, as we open files and interact with different files, you'll see all of the recently opened files on the bottom listed here. So if you do have a quick action that you want to perform on a specific file, like converting PDF to Word, you can choose from one of the quick action tools. Otherwise, you can just open a PDF to start editing. The first use case that I want to go over is to edit text within the document. At the end of the day, this is a PDF editor, not a PDF reader. So we can use this tool to edit different objects within the document. So what we'll do is go ahead and open file. Then we'll navigate to a PDF file, click and open. It'll take a second to load up the page. Now this is a very basic PDF document, mostly with text elements. If I wanted to change the header here from note taking strategies and tips to note taking strategies and tactics, I can do that by going to the edit tab, selecting edit text. And then you'll notice right away that these text elements, the different text elements now have a border around it. This is just an indication saying that we can click into it to edit the text. So I'm going to click into this and change the text. I'll hit exit editing and I can hit yes to save the uh, changes. And there you go. Now the second thing we can do is to edit object. It's very similar to editing text, but you can apply this to different objects. Unfortunately, I don't have different objects on this page, but we can choose this text object, if you will. And now I have the option to delete it altogether. If I choose another object, I can edit and I can change the text. Hit OK. And another thing that I can do here is you'll notice that I have this negative space, white space on the bottom, and I want to fill, fill it in with something. So what I'll do here is to click on Add Image, and I happen to have this image that I prepared earlier. Hit Open, and then click into place. Now that I can resize it using these handles, and then now the document looks a lot more engaging. So these are some of the options that you have in editing your PDF document. The second use case that I want to show you is to add a signature to a document. With the rise of digital documents, electronically signing PDF is incredibly common these days. So I have this document, it's an agreement, and at the bottom you can see that there's a little section for signature. What I'll do is I'm going to make it fit to width so that it's a little larger and I'll scroll down to the bottom. 
And then if you go over to the form section, there's a tool for signature. I'm going to click on it and we'll create a new signature. We have three different options. We can add an image of our signature. We can type in our signature or we can actually write it directly on this canvas. Writing is a little awkward unless you have a pen tablet. Typing, we can choose a different font that's more appropriate for signature. Uh, let's see if we can find one here. Maybe this one and I can type in my name and I can hit OK. This does not look bad. I can click it and then I can use the handles to resize. But my favorite option, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Go back to signature. I'll delete this. Create a new. And I'm going to add a picture. And this is one that I created actually using ChatGPT. I used their image generation tool and I just asked it to create a signature in a PNG file format with transparency and this is what it gave me. And I'm going to click OK and this looks a lot better and looks a little more organic than the one that we were able to type in. Okay, so this is the second use case is to add signature to your digital document. The third use case that I want to show you is filling out forms. While some PDFs have interactive form fields like this one that I'm showing on the screen where you can actually enter text in these input fields and you can even put check marks in these boxes. There are other forms like this one which is basically a flat scan of a PDF document where you can't select any of the boxes and I can't enter any text. So in this case you have two options. One is to print out the document, fill it out using a pen, scan it back into a digital format so that you can send it back. Or you can use this PDF editor. In this case I'm going to go to the form tab and now have the option to add text. And when I do that, I can click and I can type in, let's say my name, and I can even reposition them where I need to. And I can add another text. That was a mistake. So what I'll do in this case is if I go to this comments icon, I can see any text that I add you can see almost like layers, right? So I can go ahead and delete these if I don't need them. And I can add new. I can change the font, the color. You get the idea. And PDF Gear even has these little check marks that I can use to drag into these checkboxes. So this way you can keep your digital document really clean. You don't have to print it out and rescan it back in and you can send it back to your sender really easily. And this is really what the PDF editor is designed to do. Another thing you can do is to add annotations and comments to a document. This is super helpful when collaborating and reviewing a document with other people. So here I have a document and I'm going to go to the comments tab. Let's say I want to highlight a section. So it's important to print out copies. Click on highlight. That'll highlight the section. Uh, let's say that I want them to know that this is not no longer accessible. So I'm going to click on this word and then put strike through. So these are some of the things that you can do to note your document. Another thing that you can do is to add text box. If you have comments to add, you have the same option without a border. So you're just adding a text, but it doesn't have the border. And another thing you can do is to add a note. So if I click on note and select an area, let's say here, 
I can type in my comments and I can drag this box out. Uh, it still points to this word and I can change the positioning so now it's pointing to a different word and you get the idea. Again, if you start marking up documents and it gets a little confusing, you can open up this pane and you can select any elements that you want to delete. So for example, if I want to delete that strike through, I can click on the delete button here. But of course, you can actually select on the element itself, right mouse click and hit delete comment. When you're working on a larger PDF document with multiple pages, it's helpful if you're able to organize the pages. So for example, this document here has 11 pages. I know that because it says one of 11. I can also open up this thumbnail view and I can see the different pages that belong to this document. If I go to the page tab, I can select any pages. So I'm gonna choose the first page and I can hit delete pages. When I do that, it gives me the option to delete only the selected page, all pages, or custom page range. I'm just gonna keep it on the selected page, hit okay. Are you sure you want to delete? I'm gonna hit yes. Now that deletes that page. If I want to move a page within the document, I can click and drag to a different position within the document, and it's telling me that the open document has been edited, so first I have to save the changes first. Okay, hit okay. I'm gonna save the changes. Now that it's saved, I can go ahead and move it to a different position within the document. Now if I happen to have a document that is not rotated correctly, maybe it's showing as a landscape instead of a portrait mode, I can go ahead, hover over the thumbnail, and I could rotate uh, the pages to make sure they're in the correct orientation. And if I want to insert a page even from a different document, I can go ahead and click on insert pages and I can insert a blank page. Let's say at the end of the document, I'm gonna hit okay. Now that inserts a blank page, but if I want to insert a page from a different document from another PDF, it gives me the file explorer window Let's say, let's navigate to this document here, hit open, and all pages, let's say. Now the three pages of that document shows up here, and of course I could move them into different positions. So this is a super easy way to organize your pages, not only within a single document, but across multiple PDF documents. The sixth use case is to merge and split PDF documents. I know up until this point, we were primarily using this open file option to open up a PDF and doing different things within that window. Now we're gonna use some of these quick action tools. So we're gonna navigate to the merge and split tab and choose the merge PDF option. Now I can add file to this window. So I'm gonna click on add files and I'm just going to actually select all of these documents and hit open. Now, you can see the order in which the documents are gonna be combined together. So for example, the fake legal document is gonna show up on top and the PP customer journey is gonna be at the bottom. So it's, this is gonna be the last couple of pages. I could use these arrows to change their position. So the, sec, uh, the fake legal document, if I click on the down arrow, is gonna now move into the second position. If I click on it again, it's gonna move down to the third position or I can just click on a file and then drag it to the position that I want them to be. So before merging the file, I wanna give it an output name. So we could call this merged document and click on merge. It only takes like a second for it to merge the document. Now, if I were to open the document, you'll see that all of the PDFs have been combined into one. Now I'm gonna go close this. If I wanted to split a PDF document, I can go to the split option. And it's really just the same window. You have the different options across the left here. I'm gonna add file and I'll choose this form here. Click on open. 
and this form has 10 pages. Let's say I want to extract just the first three pages. So here I'm going to create a custom range, one through three, hit split. And now if I were to open this document, you can see that it now only has three pages. So this is a really helpful and useful tool if I'm working with a PDF document that has over 100 pages, for example, and I want to extract just a couple of pages from that document, I could quickly put the range and then hit split to get an extracted document. So the last use case that I wanted to share with you is to convert file formats. So for example, you can convert from PDF into Word, Excel, PNG, PowerPoint, or you can convert from Word into PDF, Excel into PDF, PowerPoint into PDF. In this case, I'm going to show you an example of converting PDF into PowerPoint because this is something that I find myself doing quite often because someone sends me a file in a PDF format. It was clearly created with a PowerPoint. I want to make some edits and I can do that with this tool now with the PDF editor, but sometimes when a document was originally created from a PowerPoint, I find it easier to make edits in that same format. So let's go ahead and do PDF to PowerPoint. When I click on this button, it asks me to add the file. So I'm going to click on it and then choose this customer journey document and hit open. And I'm going to hit convert. Now this is a 26 page document, so it is going to take a couple of uh, seconds. Conversion is successful. I'm going to open it. And at first, you'll notice that when I try to click on an element and I drag it off the page, you'll notice that I'm not able to actually select individual elements. It's dragging the whole page. What it did was each page is basically an image. This is not very helpful to me. So I'm going to close it out. Don't save. And we're going to do this again. So what we're going to do here instead is to use the advanced mode. But before I do that, I'm going to select pages one to three uh, because 26 pages is going to take some time when we're using the advanced mode. So I'm going to hit convert. And this is going to take a couple of seconds. But basically when it's done, we're now able to select individual elements and make edits. So this is a really useful feature uh, to have in my opinion. You can Google PDF gear, click on Windows, Select free download. Once the file has been downloaded, you can click to open. Hit English, OK. Hit Next. Accept the agreement, hit Next. Choose the location, hit Next. And Next again. I don't like to have shortcut created, so I'm going to check that box. And then I'm going to uncheck these two boxes here. Then hit next. Hit install. Should only take a couple of seconds. Finish. And if you look at your taskbar, you'll see the icon for the program. You can just go ahead and click it. To launch the program. And so there you have it. You can find the link to download the program in the description below. I'd love to hear from you which one of the seven features you think you'll use the most. Drop your comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.